All right, so uh, thank you very much, and uh, glad we're back. So we have uh, Michael Luna will be presenting Tools of the Trade. Thank you much. So uh, what I thought I'd do is gear this towards someone who's starting to, trying to start a CTO program. And as Dr. Lombardi mentioned earlier, there are a lot of, of um, toys that we have available to us. And I think starting with a good um, a general uh, baseline and learning those, getting experience with those, and then building on that is, is a good way of, of handling this. So uh, prepare your machine. The first step, I think, when you're, 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 you're um, uh, learning how to, how to do CTOs is, is learning about radiation protection. Get your toys, get familiar with all the CTO equipment, and then learn to bail yourself out and make sure that all your equipment is available to do so. So in terms of radiation safety, make sure that you are familiar with your system and that you're able to, to uh, set that to seven and a half frames. Um, uh, fluoroscopy, uh, maintaining 15 and cine fluoroscopy, and also become familiar with functions that will reduce your, your cine fluoroscopy um, uh, uh, amounts. Image store, store fluoroscopy. There are certain, certain you know, guidelines that you should set for yourself in terms of when to stop uh, during CTO procedures um, uh, that are useful as well. So I thought I'd, I'd break up the, the CTO PCI equipment um, uh, with the respect to lesion crossing. There's pre-lesion crossing um, and post-lesion crossing uh, toys that, that uh, you need to become familiar with. Sheets and guides in, in the pre-lesion and then guide wires, microcatheters, uh, specifically cross-boss stingray and intercoronary imaging for the lesion crossing portion of CTO PCI. And then post-lesion crossing um, um, guide catheter extension uh, cutting, scoring, balloon, and then all forms of atherectomy. So for pre-lesion crossing, the sheets, as Manosa mentioned earlier, the, the, the um, uh, eight French 45 centimeter sheets from a femoral approach uh, give you optimal uh, support. Uh, you can see the, the markers here of the 45 sheets that tend to be above the diaphragm. Uh, the radio approach, um, we have an expert here, uh, obviously, and, and that, that uh, is doable. It's uh, mostly restricted to six French, although you can use some bigger guides, uh, sheathless guides, um, uh, but there are still some limitations in, in terms of support there. And if you're stuck with six French, then uh, trapping technique um, uh, can be a, a problem there. The typical guides that we use uh, are for the left coronary XB, EBU, and AL, and for the right coronary, mostly AL, but uh, sometimes JR with the addition of guideliner support. Uh, in terms of guide wires, there are four major categories, workhorse wire, polymer jacket or wi jacketed wires, open coil wires, and externalization wires. And you have to become familiar. These are just uh, examples of some that I commonly use, but you need to come uh, uh, build up a comfort uh, for yourself. Uh, workhorse wires that I commonly use, Xi'an Blue, Samurai, Fielder XT in the, in the polymer jacketed with FC, Pilot 200, and Whisper. And then uh, important ones uh, in the open coil variety, uh, uh, Xi'an, that we use commonly for retrograde approaches. The externalization wire that I commonly use now is the R350. So the microcatheters, uh, what this does is allow you to uh, easily exchange wires once you've gotten to your uh, zone of attack. Um, the push force, as you'll see in the next slide, is increased when you have a, a uh, microcatheter over your wire. You can do contrast injections distally and, um, and then also allows you to traverse collaterals and, and do controlled cemental tracking um, in, in these uh, complex cases. So this is, uh, uh, this is a, a slide that, that sort of um, uh, conveys the, the increased push force that you get with your uh, guide wire when you add other uh, catheters on top of that. You can see the push force, uh, the, uh, the green uh, line on the bottom, and the subsequent uh, increase in force that you get by adding different uh, catheters, either microcatheters, and then this special catheter called the center cross catheter is a self-expanding anchor that coaxializes your, your catheter and, um, and directs wire uh, through the proximal cap. Specifically cross boss. This is an important one to learn. As you saw with Dr. Lombardi's case, uh, this is a catheter that has a, a blunt uh, tip uh, that allows you to um, uh, have good control um, in, in crossing these lesions. Now, you can subintimately track with this catheter, uh, but also, uh, as Dr. Lombardi uh, almost thought he had, uh, you can, you can uh, cross true lumen uh, a lot of times and use a fast spin technique, which Dr. Lombardi uh, showed very nicely. Uh, the benefit, uh, as he also mentioned, of this catheter is that it cr creates a very limited subintimal space, keeps it small so that uh, when you re-enter uh, into true lumen using the Stingray catheter, um, it's nice and, and compact. So this balloon, as was mentioned earlier, is uh, 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 when inflated to four atmospheres, uh, orients itself in the subintimal space nicely. It's 2.5 uh, millimeters wide and 10 millimeters in length. 
Uh, there are 180 degree opposing um, ports. One of them is, is uh, facing the lumen and that, that will be your target uh, when re-entering these, uh, entering or dissection re-entries. Intracoronary imaging is very important um, uh, for CTO PCI. You have to feel comfortable using it in real time and, uh, and trying to use it for, to your advantage. This is a, a case that had uh, multi-vessel disease was turned down for cabbage and uh, you can see uh, an LED CTO that's an osteoclusion. Uh, retrograde, this is, I'll come back to this at, at, at the end when we're talking about bailout, but uh, it's a good example of using uh, IVUS to guide your reentry, in this case, uh, into the left main. Post-lesion crossing, so one of the things that uh, is, is important for you to be familiar with and feel comfortable using is, is the snare, especially when you're doing a retrograde case. You can see here on the right side um, uh, and, uh, an illustration of this where your retrograde wire exits your um, antegrade uh, vessel or your, your target vessel. Uh, into the aorta, and if you're unable to pass that wire into your antegrade guide, then your only option is to snare that wire um, into your antegrade guide and externalize that wire. And this is uh, the one that I commonly use. This is the end snare. It's a tulip-like uh, triple um, wire snare that works very well to to uh, to externalize these wires. And uh, lesion modification and device delivery. Um, so you have to again feel very very comfortable. Um, at the rectomizing uh, CTO lesions, okay? It's, it's, you know, sometimes counterintuitive or goes against what was uh, previously taught that, that you should steer away from, from uh, being aggressive with atherectomy devices in CTO, but it's quite the opposite. And, and to, to modify the lesion adequately, sometimes you're forced to do this. Uh, the right shows uh, the use of, of a guideliner uh, catheter to deliver stents. You can see this is a calcified CTO. Uh, and you have to feel very comfortable using aggressive uh, balloon coaxialization, getting your guideliner deep in the vessel uh, to deliver your stents and get good results. So bailing yourself out, the, the obvious ones are acute, acute vessel closure, the, the complications I mean, coronary perforation and tamponade. Uh, those are the biggest concerns and, and you have to, again, uh, make sure that, that the lab is well aware of, of these complications and that they know where all your uh, bailout equipment uh, is, uh, pericardial synthesis kit, having covered stents uh, readily available. And you, you should become familiar with uh, coils uh, and the catheters are required for these coils. And, and it's good to learn at least just one uh, and have that system available uh, while you're doing these uh, interventions. Uh, so the, there's an added um, uh, bailout toy, toy that uh, I learned uh, from, from that case that I told you about, the, the left main IVIS uh, guided uh, reentry. And this is the same patient. So you can see this patient has trifascicular block. Um, and as I was uh, traversing, uh, I had to go retrograde here. I couldn't catch anything antegrade. Went retrograde through a septal collateral from the right coronary, and as the catheter, the Corsair catheter, traversed the septum, um, the remaining fascicle must have been bumped because uh, AV block ensued and had uh, no escape uh, rhythm, and uh, he had cardiac arrest. So uh, in this scenario, obviously, we, we had to uh, put a temp wire. I continued with the, with the procedure still with the temp wire and was able to get a good result at the end. But, but that's changed uh, um, uh, in terms of what I add to my CTO card. So now there's a temp wire available uh, because at that time they scrambled and it took a, a bit of time to get it uh, to me quickly. And, um, and so it, I think I've, it's an important lesson to learn if you ever see trifascicular block or advanced block um, in a patient who's not paced uh, to keep that um, in mind in these patients. And so this is the CTO cart that, that I use at uh, UT. You can see uh, balloons and stents that um, you prefer, uh, CTO wires, microcatheters, guideliner um, uh, catheters, and uh, of course the temp wire that's added now. And I'll stop there. Thank you very much.